Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank all of you for appearing uh, today before the committee. We appreciate your testimony on the initial impressions of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Um, if you, I think, from my perspective, and I think any objective perspective, the results are already impressive. Um, for a law that's only been in effect now for just uh, over four months, we've already seen more than 500 companies who've announced investments in their employees through increased wages and benefits, bonuses, and retirement plan contributions, uh, and those benefits affect more than five and a half million American workers. And while much of the media attention uh, has been on the response from the nation's largest companies, we're seeing the positive outcomes in our local businesses, even in places uh, uh, like my state of South Dakota, Aladdin Industries in Elk Point, South Dakota, Great Western Bank Corp in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, which are increasing their base wages uh, for their employees. Black Hills Energy, Rapid City, South Dakota, which is passing benefits from tax reform along to its utility customers. Uh, this is welcome news for the hardworking middle class families that we set out to benefit, benefit through tax reform. And we're also seeing uh, companies across the country respond to the new tax law with announcements of investments in new projects, facilities, and other ventures. And I suspect this is only beginning, especially for smaller and medium-sized businesses. And I'm sure that many of these companies are still incorporating the new rules and tax relief into their business plans for this year and beyond. This is particularly true for the new pass-through deduction for small businesses, farmers, and ranchers, which I believe holds enormous potential for growth that we're just starting to see. And I'm particularly pleased that we have Mr. Cranston uh, here today uh, to give us the perspective of his small business and that of NFIB's members generally. Uh, Mr. Chairman, last week the Chairman of the President's Council of Economic Advisors had an opinion piece in the Wall Street Journal that reviewed the initial benefits of the Tax Cuts and Jobs, Cut, Jobs Act for American workers and businesses, and I would ask unanimous consent to insert a copy of that article into the record. Thank you. Um, let me, uh, if I might, just turn to a couple of quick questions here. We don't have a lot of time, but um, if you listen to our colleagues on the other side and some of the media stories, you'd think that every provision of the new tax law is so fundamentally flawed that nobody's going to benefit. And conveniently, they ignore all the initial reactions that demonstrate that American businesses are already factoring the new law into their business plans. They also ignore the fact that major tax legislation, including the 1986 Tax Act and subsequent issues that need to be addressed and, and required guidance from the Treasury Department and from the IRS. Mr. Cranston, are you able to factor into your business plans the effects of the lower individual tax rates and the immediate expensing of property and equipment that you invest for your business? Uh, thank you, Senator. Uh, as I had shared earlier in my testimony, yes. Uh, at the beginning of the year, as soon as I had an opportunity to understand what the tax law uh, encompassed with the Section 199A, it was a fairly simple, straightforward calculation for me to understand that, you know what, depending upon what my net income this year is, I'm going to be able to save five or $10,000. And for me, that money is going right back into our business. Okay. And the, also the family provisions, increased standard deduction, double child tax credit relief from the alternative minimum tax, uh, uh, also seeing some benefit from those? Absolutely. Okay. Good. Um, one of the key objectives in tax reform was to make sure that uh, we provided tax relief for American businesses uh, from the largest to the smallest. And for corporations, that was accomplished, of course, by reducing what was the highest tax rate in the world uh, to 21 percent. For pass-through businesses, sole proprietorships, partnerships, LLCs, and S-Corps, it was more challenging. Uh, the new pass-through deduction was the best approach to provide that relief while maintaining the flexibility uh, of a pass-through business and recognizing that they are not taxed at the entity level uh, and that their taxable income is determined at the, lower, at the owner level. Uh, Dr. Holzekin, despite the criticism of the delivery mechanism, uh, do you agree that uh, providing tax relief for pass-through businesses to correspond to the corporate tax rate reduction uh, was a good thing or was it, was it a mistake as has been alleged by some of our colleagues on the other side? I think it was an absolutely necessary part of the tax reform. You want to have a level tax playing field between the different kinds of entities. And if you're going to have a, a preferential treatment of a kind of income, whether it's domestic income versus international or capital income versus labor income in a pass-through entity, you're going to have to write rules to do that. Rules are always complex and people always complain about them, but they're a reality of the tax code. And how, how, much, how many businesses would you say fall under 
that 157.5 and 315 thousand uh, dollar that anybody anybody basically qualifies for. No. Yeah, this is going to be the simplest for the vast majority of pass-throughs. Um, they, they won't. They're small. They automatically get it. Um, there are many large pass-throughs, and they have the capability of dealing with the complexities of the tax law. Right, and they have to though meet the wage test or the the capital uh, test, one or the other, which suggests that they're making investments, which is in, in, entirely what we wanted them to do. You don't want to have a reduced tax and saving investment unless you actually have some investment, and right. these tests are meant to demonstrate that. The numbers I have are that 91% of single taxpayers and 85.5% of married couples filing jointly will fall below the deductions income thresholds, that 157, 5, and 15. That's an awful lot of small businesses that are going to benefit from that deduction. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.